Our storm system entering the Gulf is strengthening faster and more intense than the models showed earlier. Hi, everybody. Happy Saturday. I'm meteorologist Chris Justice broadcasting from the Home Weather Center right now. I want to let you know the very latest on this system. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Very easy to do so. I talk all things severe weather, hurricanes, and wintry weather here. A great place for us to connect and watch things like this. This is likely to become Idalia, which will likely become a tropical storm. And if the trends continue, maybe even a little bit earlier than the model showed. Earlier, it looked like Sunday into Monday. To me, this looks like a developing tropical system right now. Let me turn on the wind streams because that kind of helps us identify where a circulation may be forming. And already, I can tell you, this is sitting over uh, very prime conditions and, and almost ideal conditions above it. There's high relative humidity. There is very low wind shear. And this system is moving into water that's not only warm, but has an, 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 an incredible amount of heat energy. That's not just warm water. That's has there been upwelling lately? Is the water undisturbed? In this case, yes, it is very uh, ripe. The, the, nothing has disturbed this water recently. So there's the circulation trying to form right there. You've got some pretty intense thunderstorms firing up on it. It is feeding off of its environment. And unfortunately, it may be intensifying a little bit more quickly. It's moving north at 10 miles per hour, which is good. The faster this storm system can move, the better. I said this yesterday, and, and, and I'll say it again. Uh, any hour that this system is in the Gulf is, is too long, okay? So we need this thing to hurry up and get on out of here. The higher its forward speed, the more wind shear there is. So that can sometimes uh, keep something from forming, but it needs to not realize the environment it's in. If it does, it's going to be a stronger system and could perhaps be a, a hurricane uh, at that. So watching it very, very closely, winds are at 25 miles per hour. Wouldn't be surprised if this thing isn't designated a tropical depression later on tonight or early tomorrow morning. So the spaghetti models, what do they look like? Well, right now they say anywhere from Tampa Bay through Panama City Beach need to be on guard. And that's on that's on course for, for what we would uh, see at this time of the ball game. I want to see these tighten up over the next few days. But if there were to be a track by the National Hurricane Center later today or tomorrow from a TD or maybe even a potential tropical cyclone as they do, I would draw it somewhere in here, get the cone really wide in here because we know that it could track through the Western Carolinas or it could be like that. So that's where about I would draw the cone matching up with the spaghetti models. I want to show you the spaghetti models, but with intensity, with a caveat, okay? Most of the computer models here through Monday, Tuesday, keep this thing a tropical storm. So what gives? It's got some incredible fuel around it. Well, I fear that the computer models may not be taken into account how warm the environment is in the Gulf. And if that's the case, this thing could be overperforming. And if I start seeing that over the next 12 to 24 hours, we need to prepare for a hurricane instead of a tropical storm in the southeast. So the tropical wave, this is a look at our three main computer models. I do not have the European yet. It is still processing. But the Canadian in lockstep with the previous Canadian model and the European with an idea that it goes right over Florida, then back out to sea. That would limit the impacts to the Carolinas and North Georgia, but bring higher impacts, severe concerns, and flooding to Central Florida, to our friends in Orlando. The American GFS model has come around a little bit. I'm almost wondering if the GFS is trying to come in line with what the Canadian and the European are showing. So let's look and underneath the hood, so to speak, at the GFS. Now, the GFS I'll put here in yellow, and I've got a whole lot of other green ones on here. So what am I showing you here? Spaghetti? Well, kind of. Uh, you know, you have to understand that a computer model is run many different times, and it's called an ensemble. In the GFS's case, it's 20 to 30 times. European goes 51 different times. So I'm showing you each one of these models. Now, we try to trick the models. We start one of these low pressure system lines uh, with a slightly different starting position, maybe a slightly different intensity. And if you end up at the same place at the end of the day, you know you've got a pretty accurate forecast. In this case, uh, I look at this to see, do I trust the operational yellow one? In this case, no, I do not. And the reason why, you can look at it a little bit closer and I'll explain. Look at the number of lines that are east of this operational run. Probably 80% of the 
25 or 30 different runs. There's only four or five of them on this side. So that tells me that as we're looking closer at this, the majority of the GFS solutions are saying, "Mm -mm, it's going to go this way instead of this way. So I would draw, if I were the National Hurricane Center, a track somewhere in here uh, and then go back through Florida because that's where the GFS is showing, that's where the European is showing, and uh, they have drastic differently, drastically different impacts on each one. So here's the European, what the radar could look like. It's got a tropical storm forming by Tuesday. And again, these models might be you know, underdoing it a little bit because this thing already looks like it's trying to become a tropical depression, much less a tropical storm if it continues on its same intensity. So here we go into the Big Bend region of Florida, likely as a strong tropical storm. Winds are at about 45 miles per hour at this time. We can do that. We can handle that. Of course, Fort Myers doesn't want to see anything or have anything to do with this. Uh, but as it moves through, it's moving quickly. That's the good news. And uh, this cold front back toward the west and north helping um, accelerate its movement. In the western Carolinas, we would likely have some scattered downpours, some breezy conditions. But the worst of the rain in this case would be three to five inches from Savannah to Charleston to Myrtle Beach. And the winds would be around 30 to 40 miles per hour. But look what happens when it moves off the coast. Eh, this thing might intensify to a hurricane, but it's pulling away. And that's because it's back out over open water. In the Western Carolinas, dare I say cool? Yeah, this would bring in a lot of northerly winds. And a lot of the southeast will be cooling down to the highs in the 70s, Thursday, Friday, even into Saturday of Labor Day weekend, with lows in the 50s at night. Yeah, it's going to be nice behind this tropical system. The humidity will be pulled with it. Uh, the northerly winds will bring in some cooler weather. So do expect it to get significantly cooler across the south east behind this system and a fantastic Labor Day weekend behind it. So the GFS model, it's a lot more sloppy to begin with. And again, I don't necessarily buy that because the models are, are really underdoing what it's actually doing right now. As this moves toward the north, toward Panama City Beach, that's where the GFS has it making landfall as a tropical depression or a tropical storm. Uh, this got winds right here about 40 miles per hour. And then it moves toward the north more as a, a weak and sloppy system through Atlanta. This would bring quite a bit of rain more inland. Alabama, you're getting in on some pretty hefty rain. So is Georgia. So is uh, the Western Carolinas, Greenville. We could get three to five inches of rain out of this through Wednesday, Wednesday night. And part of Thursday would be very wet because the system's basically dissipating over us before it moves on out. You still end up with a nice Friday, Saturday, Sunday with this thing pulling away. But uh, whew, that'd be a lot of rain compared to the other solutions. I want to show you this. This is our in-house model that uh, WYFF4 has access to. And it's great for severe weather. But I use it in situations like this where I'm trying to define an eye wall. And, and this thing shows it blowing up quickly. This shows a tropical depression or a tropical storm by tomorrow um, versus Sunday. And you can see that spin already happening right there. And boom, this thing kind of shows it strong, maybe even a, a, a hurricane at this point by Tuesday there in the Gulf. So just to show you that eh, we got to watch that one very, very closely right there. Uh, Franklin, of course, we're keeping an eye on that. If you haven't checked in on that one for a while, uh, it's going to be a Cat 3 monster. Winds at 120 miles per hour, so thankfully that bad boy is heading far, far away and will not be a threat to the United States. But uh, wow, that uh, that is one to watch as we're looking closely at that. So Hurricane Franklin, uh, Cat 3 by Tuesday, that's pulling away. Uh, let's look at the wind speeds out of both of these. Franklin becoming a monster, and then you've got this other system in the Gulf pulling north. It'd bring some strong winds by Tuesday, Wednesday to Florida, and then the worst of the winds would be along the coast in the Carolinas and right out to sea. How about the wind speeds, according to the latest European? Uh, in the rainfall totals here, you've got quite a bit of rain for the I-95 corridor, while the western Carolinas, according to the European, do not get get a lot of rain, if any, from this tropical cyclone. All right, so tropical heat energy. This is uh, this is the go-to map that shows the fuel. And in this case, this system, where it sits right now, is basically uh, in an area that uh, is feeding off of extreme heat energy. That's not only just a warm water temperature, but it accounts for has there been any other tropical activity basically churning up the ocean and making it uh, cooler, bringing up cooler water to the top? No. So there's plenty of warm water here, plenty of fuel for this to 
get its act together. And that's what I'll be watching in the coming days. How about something deeper into the future? Is there any other threats behind this? The answer as of right now is no. Uh, things look to be calming down. There's Franklin. There's uh, what will be Idalia likely. Uh, there are a couple of different waves in the Atlantic going into Labor Day and then going into next Tuesday, which would be after Labor Day. There's something in the extreme southern part of the Atlantic, but because of its latitude, that would likely just move west and, and begin to, to weaken. So we'd, we'd be watching it, but at least we get a break from the most intense, the most volatile type weather that we have there. Folks, if you will, if you don't subscribe to me already, my forecasting is pretty simple. I'm very transparent. I will tell you when you need to worry. I will tell you when you don't need to worry. And the best part is I'm going to shoot you straight. I don't hide anything from you, but that also comes from some responsibility. I don't hype I just inform. I would like to prepare you and not scare you so that you and your family can make the decisions to stay safe in any kind of severe weather. So if you haven't already, please consider following my pages. I would really appreciate it. And I'll have another update later on tonight.